let's talk about the acquisition. So okay. are there many people coming to you? Is it, are you thinking of selling or are people approaching you about buying your company? What, what was that like? Yeah. So got to the point in like probably late 2017, 2018, when my co-founder and I were thinking about, you know, okay, what, what does the future look like for us? You're six, seven years in, the seven year rich is here. Yeah. Actually, you know, from Idea Lab point, when we started full time, we're about five years in at that point. So maybe, okay. Yeah, about five years in at that point. And we were thinking, okay, so this space is getting more competitive. We have, you know, the landscape looks way different than when we started. We have more competitors doing this. We are either going to need to raise money, seriously raise money. Like, mm. To stay competitive, to, to become stay, a player to or grow, like plant your flag. Yeah. Yeah. To really scale and take this to the next level. Yep. Or join a strategic partner that we can add more value and like as one would be even more valuable. Right. So we're kind of looking at both of this those. This is why people say one plus one equals three sometimes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is exactly that. Totally. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we were thinking about what to do. And right around that time, we did have some inbound, um, interest okay it's kind of and were your investors helping with this or is it not the investor so much as the board um okay although we did i so we did have one let's see when did armando come on we had armando is one of our angel investors who is also a successful entrepreneur he sold his company at espresso to hootsuite okay and awesome when he was looking at my monthly or quarterly investor updates he saw very similar trend to to where at uh, at Espresso was his company was like two years prior. Kudos to Armando for actually looking at investor yes. updates. Yes, that's exactly. so appreciated. Like, so many very people don't familiar, and I think I can help these guys because he was basically in charge of their growth engine. Okay, and so he reached out and we started talking about this side, side note here, but we started talking about you know him coming on as an advisor, almost like a super advisor, almost a part time. COO, sure, that level, like yep. not just everybody setting talks you up for advisors the... and then you never hear from them again. This was like we were going to meet twice a week. He lives in San Francisco, so we're going to jump on a, you know, a Google Hangout or something twice a week. Mm -hmm. Go through our financials, go through our strategy, and like he's going to work with us to help us grow. So that actually happened. That was one of the Angelus syndicates too. So he did a Got syndicate. It. He raised some money. He came on as advisor, and he helped us out a ton. Now he's kind of package this up and it's helping some other companies too, which yeah. is really cool. So he helped a ton in sort of with this strategy as well as our board. And Mike and I realized and, and thought about it and said, okay, well, if we raise VC money now, we're basically committing to at least another five years, right? Mm -hmm. To grow the company to the size that the return would be good enough for the VCs. The VCs, yeah. Probably five years, maybe at least three, right? Yeah. So do we want to do that? We're starting to see more and more competition. We're seeing companies that we partner with, you know, traditionally have partnered with like Shopify now launch their own Amazon and eBay integration. So they become frenemy almost like, are they competing? Are they not? We still do very well and, and have a great partnership with Shopify. That's but, fascinating. So they're starting, starting to see more and more of that. Like other the writings on the wall. consolidation of the market. Yep. This is becoming not a nice to have anymore. It's becoming a must have. Right. Um, for the big players to stay competitive. Players, yeah. yeah. And so that makes perfect it sense. Felt like, okay, joining forces with a bigger company makes more sense than trying to go at this alone. And so rather than pursuing investment, we looked at that. And at this, right at that same time, we had GoDaddy reach out to us and say, hey, uh, most people know us for domains and hosting because that's what we've done. Yeah. But we are now in a position where we're launching tools to help everyday entrepreneurs be successful online. And we launched this website builder and it has online store product. So you can launch and set up your online store super quickly. Uh, we have all these other tools too, like scheduling if you're a hairdresser or something like that, or we can sell digital goods. We can sell, not even just sell, but you can spin up a website really quickly. You can uh, do bookkeeping. Like we have all these tools for, for entrepreneurs and we see that the major gap is this marketplace integration and you guys do it better than anybody else for small businesses and so we would love to have you 
build a white label solution for us where you are powering it. Oh, for interesting. It okay. An online store. So we said, okay. And we, we've never done that before, but we started going down that path and working on the deal with them. And is this taking away all your tech resources? Not or? all of them, no, but it, a we majority? definitely tabled some other priorities that we had. Yeah. We thought this was going to be big. We thought this could, I mean, we're, at that point, we weren't necessarily even thinking acquisition. We were just right. thinking like, strategic plan. massive growth engine for us where we can just you know have a huge lead funnel of, of yep. many customers. But pretty quickly, their corp dev team came forward and said, hey, you know, we see these kinds of heavy technical partnerships work better for one company. Hmm. Um, how, how far into the integration did they ask? We hadn't even started building yet. We were okay, still so it's pretty early on. Part, still working through some of the contract stuff. And, but we weren't ready to sell yet. Uh, Mike and I, this was 2017, so we said, we held them off and said, well, you know what, let's just focus on the partnership for now. And they said, great, well, if you ever want to have the discussion again, let us know. So the partnership, we'd signed the deal. That took months to get legal. Absolutely. That. Yeah. Signed the deal, started working on the actual technical integration in 2000, early 2018. And it took us about six months. So late 2018, um, we were ready to launch. And at that point, we started getting some other interest, inbound interest coming in. And so we reached out to GoDaddy again and said, hey, we're interested in having that conversation again. Took that, you know, that went on for a while. In the meantime, we had launched the white label integration and it did really well. We got thousands of GoDaddy sellers. But you were, you right knew, away. right? You knew that you had to, you had to make it pop. You, like you had yeah, to get it right. Of course, they're interested. Yeah. Of course. And then of course, you know, they want to, when we came back, they're like, well, let's, let's see how the integration does first. Yeah. And you're <laughs> like, no problem. <laughs> and meanwhile, you're getting other inbound hits. What a yeah, perfect, I mean, it was kind that's of, amazing. It, it wasn't like super aggressive at the time, but we had some interest. And, but when it started heating up, we had the discussions uh, with GoDaddy and a few others. And ultimately... And were you pretty candid with them? We were. We didn't, tell, you know, we had NDAs. We didn't sure, you wouldn't say the name. Was totally. What the amounts were or anything, but we were getting other offers. Yeah. The company. Um, but ultimately, you know, for us, Mike and I, the culture of who we were going to join was super important. How they were going to treat our employees was super important. The great thing is that we had just got to spend a year plus working with GoDaddy, both on the biz dev side, people who would be end up being my boss, um, the technical side, and we loved it. Our engineers said, you know, of all the partners we've worked with, this has been the best, and we just really loved the opportunity on Go at GoDaddy because they have this 19 million customers already from the domains and hosting side. Yeah. And this huge, you know, they're still one of the biggest domain providers in the world. And so most people, when they, when you're an entrepreneur and you come up with an idea, the first thing you do is name it and go buy a domain name. And most people go to GoDaddy. That's true. So it's a huge lead gen for them. Huge, massive competitive advantage over their competitors. Yeah. And this, you know, their whole, what was called Go Central at the time, which is now this uh, websites plus marketing suite that they have with email marketing and all of other stuff was really exciting to me and Mike to be a part of that growth kind of felt startup y mm -hmm. way. They were mm -hmm. really scrappy to get this thing going. So when you signed the paperwork, did you throw a big party? You tell your whole team what was we the did. yeah that was, that was fun. That was super stressful actually because you know you taking care of your employees is actually very difficult in it an is. acquisition. And I think a lot of people don't um, there's been an, uh, there's a lot of horror stories that don't get told enough, but sometimes the employees are put on, I would say like a four year golden handcuff or sometimes a three year golden handcuff, but then they're, they're, they're fired in year two. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they never get the payout and this is never told yeah. to anybody, but this happens all the time. And then what ends up happening is it goes an HR from the buying company will pay these people, not what they were supposed to get, but a percentage of it just to keep quiet and not effectively get negative press. But it sounds like not the case for you, which is wonderful. That will not happen here. GoDaddy acquires a lot of companies. We were the 24th company in the last five years, I think, that they've acquired. Wow. And we were able to speak to a lot of founders from prior acquisitions before okay. signing with them and heard, all heard great things. And, you know, it's kind of like for them. That's great. It's the reputation is important, right? Um, totally. It's almost like a VC. VCs don't sign NDAs. 
uh, you know, famously don't sign NDAs and people are worried that VCs are going to steal their idea. <laughs> it's like, that's not going to happen because they'll never do another deal ever. If right. They know if their integrity is. I've large. seen, I've seen VCs uh, defend the worst of CEOs to my face because they, that's their party. It's almost like talking to a politician and they'll just say, we stand behind all of our founders. We believe they're always yeah. doing the right thing. And, We'll always do that. And if any stock becomes available in the company, we'll gobble it up because we're, right. you know, we, we believe big time these people will succeed. Right. And I'm right. always like, wow, that's, that is not true at all. But I love the commitment to the cause because they know the reputation yeah. is so huge. Yeah. And then in GoDaddy's case, they want to continue to acquire companies. And so they know if they growth by acquisition or a bunch of former founders, that word is going to get out and we'll never acquire right. a company again. Right. So you have a big not party? They want it. I mean, they're good people, so not yeah, no. they won't do that anyway, but it's nice to but hear. But there is, you know, there is a incentive for them not to do that as well because it would ruin their business. Yeah. So we retained all of our employees. Everybody uh, did well. In the, you know, every employee had stock options. Brian uh, Nolan, CEO of the year. That's so nice. <laughs> no, I'm and, serious. And, like, we, and, you know, what's importantly, we retained everybody. That was very big for us. My this is a very uncommon not, story. You're I've... not going to lay off anybody. Yeah. So if you need to have that, then including the meditation, including the meditation coach. <laughs> the hardest part, though, was you know GoDaddy is a public company, so yes. you have to keep it very quiet during the due diligence period and leading up to it, even from our employees. So do our they, employees do they, did not know until the day of when we told them. Did the they case. send a team in to do any IT type of network security stuff? Yes, a little bit. Like a so training, we did we'll call have it. To, I mean, they came in. Fortunately, we had the partnership. So they were coming in for the part, like the business right. leaders were coming in for the partnership side of things and even the tech leaders. But during due diligence, which was six or seven weeks before closing uh, for that whole time, which was one of the most stressful things <laughs> I've ever gone through in my life, um, we did have one point where we had to tell couple of our technical leads about the acquisition because they had to do with a technical due diligence. Yes. And Mike and I could not. So Mike and Mike, you, you and Mike are not technical. In you know, I started my career as a software engineer. So okay. I consider myself technical. I'm like a product guy. Yep. But I am no longer writing code. I cannot walk you through our code and tell you what's Got going. it. So we needed somebody very technical to do that. So yeah. we did have to, near the end, let a few people know. But most of the team did not know. And we had planned a big party. It was actually really fun because I believe super it. stressful. So we closed it on a Wednesday, I believe. I think April 10th was a Wednesday. And even up until like that last weekend, we were negotiating little fine points of the deal. And But we still needed to leave enough time for all of our investors to sign off on this. So, right. I mean, it's a massive packet of paper. How many signatures did you need in total? We needed the... Um, Probably about 15 or so. Yeah. Maybe more, something like that. So we had to give our investors a heads up of like, hey, this is coming, so be ready. And then we send it out on a Sunday, and it has to be back by Tuesday so we can close on Wednesday. I mean, it was just like mm -hmm. tracking down everybody. They're all across the country and the world. Like some are on vacation. Like it was, it was gnarly. And we planned a big party. So we had the whole, this whole event space. We had like 20 people from GoDaddy come down in secret hiding uh, throughout the day because we made the announcement to the team after the markets closed because going is public. So. Totally. Which is nice to be on the West Coast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but we did a little, even a little bit later, we did like at three o'clock because we just wanted to give them the rest of the day to go party. Do you make the announcement? Or like, yeah. You're we on recorded. the microphone. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. yeah. We were secretly recorded it. So we had swag, go to any swag. We had all kinds of stuff set up a whole like party with, Champagne at a at a bar nearby with champagne and food and a bunch of not your landlord points. but a different bar totally yeah. <laughs> landlord bar is a, a fun sports bar but sure we sure. went to like a nicer place but working with the PR team at GoDaddy was really cool because they had like a, they call it a TikTok right down to the minute of we are going to tell the uh, team at three o'clock at three o five the press release is going to go out at three ten this is going to happen at three eleven this is going to happen and it's like boom boom we rehearsed it like it was it was fun. And is your phone going nuts at some uh, point? It, it did after that, yeah. But it was fun telling the team because we have oh, monthly that's so cool. uh, all hands meetings where uh, town halls, we call them, right? Where we just sure. kind of like review what's going on with the company. And so we set it up like that. 
Mike and I set it up like monthly town hall for April. And we started going through some of the metrics and celebrating. We had hit a revenue milestone actually just before that. So we're kind of celebrating this that. It's pretty amazing. All, the, and, all uh, of this coming together. Yeah. And talking through how we got to that revenue milestone. And then we kind of said, well, you know, we got to that and that, you know, everybody already knew about the, the partnership that we had with GoDaddy. So we said, we got to that revenue milestone without even considering the revenue that's going to come from the partnership. And this is how cool that partnership is. This, these are some of the commercials that GoDaddy has been doing for this online store and everything. And we played some really cool video spots that GoDaddy produced and getting everybody kind of hyped up. It's like fast paced music on these videos and everything. And then uh, said, wouldn't it be really cool if, uh, if we all were working together? I forgot exactly what I said. Something to the effect of like, if we're all, if we join this company and we're yeah, all working together. if you were one. And then it was like quiet. Like, everybody was like, what is he talking about? <laughs> and then we announced that we've been acquired. And it was, people were like, it took a moment. People were shocked, super happy. A couple people were crying, like in, in happiness. Of course. And uh, we were coached very well to say, you know, the first thing you need to make sure you say after that is don't worry. You all have new jobs. Nobody's yeah. getting fired. Yeah. Cause that's what people are waiting for. And right. They're not going to hear anything else until they hear that. What's tomorrow look like? Yep. Yeah. And, uh, so we said that and reiter reiterated that. Same office. Times. Everything's good. Higher pay. And by the way, we have 20 GoDaddy people waiting to party with you. So let's go back up. <laughs>